This is the famous Botta. The locals favor boats and trawlers to get to Jor Shalipur of Jor Bhadrasham Upazila. In spite of being only 70 to 80 kilometers from the capital, the people of these villages remain destitute and jobless. This is so because the land here is non-cultivable. Consequently, the unemployed inhabitants look desperately for alternate means of income. And, as a result, women of this region frequently fall prey to deceit and deception of unscrupulous people who lure them by taking advantage of their poor economic condition. Parveen is one such unfortunate teenager of Shalichar who is passing her days full of frightful memories she'd rather forget. Her future seems uncertain now. She wonders why life is so artist. She does not know who to turn to, full of anger and shame. She often thinks of taking her own life. She ponders on the merit of living and the bleak future it holds. She fondly recollects that it was only a year and a half back when she used to be happy even in her poor family. At least the family had blessed her with love. To financially support her family, and like so many others in the village, Parveen got caught in the web of the middleman, who offered her a job of a domestic help at a household in Lebanon. She decided to accept the offer. The middleman arranged for her passport that proclaimed her to be 26 years old, when in fact she was only 16. Thus, with only a little education to her credit, practically no skills to speak of, and having no knowledge of the foreign language, Parveen set foot in her dreamland, Lebanon. As was bound to happen, this hapless and poor girl was faced with hardships from the moment she set foot in Lebanon. Working as a household help and with no knowledge of the local language, her problems were compounded with distaste for the local cuisine. Her situation got further worse by the constant torment and torture meted out by her employer. She decides not to put up with such torture anymore, especially so when money had to be loaned to provide for the job. She escapes. Parveen comes across a benefactor who promises to provide her with a good job and takes her with him. Ironically, this time around too, the supposed benefactor turns out to be a tormentor as well and she faces brutal atrocities from him. Later, she is left on the streets of Beirut in a critical condition. The hapless, tortured and left for dead Parveen is first found by the local police and thereafter taken in by the Caritas Lebanon Migrant Center. The center helps the poor girl to get back home. অনেকবার তোমার দিল করছে দুই তিন বার আর কি ওই 
মারধর করছে তারপর একদিন অজ্ঞানেরিসম পরে এসে মাথায় পানি ঢালছিল পরে আমার এই বাংলাদেশে এয়ারপোর্টে দিয়ে গেছে মালিকে তাই আমি কইতে পারছি তারপরে যে কি হইছে তারপর আমার হুশ ছিল না আম কষ্ট দিয়ে দেখাইতে পারিনি তারা অনেক রক্ত পানি করে টাকা কামাইছে এবং আমি তো আর দেখাইতে পারি না হারাও তো হে টাকা দিয়ে আমাকে পাঠাইছে তাই হেটা আমি আর বাপ মাকে দেওয়ার জন্য এবং আমার নিজে পায় দাঁড়ানোর জন্য আমি যাইতে চাচ্ছি Back home, Praveen's parents break down emotionally and become shell-shocked at seeing the horrific plight of their daughter. I am a member of the country. 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 Praveen, perhaps, could not have come back home without the help of international donor agencies. Sadly, however, she didn't find justice on her return home. A case was filed against the trickster and village middleman. But police help was hard to come by for Praveen. <laughs> তাল নুর ইসলাম বেরে এই পর্যন্ত আমি আমার নাম বাদ দিলা ফোন করবে দিলা কথা কইব দিলা হে মেয়াড আমার পাগলের নাল বিদে ঢাকায় পাঠাইলো ছয় দিনের মধ্যে কথা কইব দিলা এই যে কারণ রইল কি গ্রাম মেম্বার চেয়ারম্যানটা ইউনিয়ন পরিষদে বৈশা সালিশ করলো যে 90000 টাকা দিবে না এক মাসের টাইম নিছলো ওই টাকা তো দেই নাই কোন টাকা আর কি দিবে সে দিবেন আর কি থানায়তে দারোগা নাম করলাম তাই রিপোর্টটা চার চিটটা কি যে কামাই করে ওই নাম দি বুঝি একটু বুঝি দিনে হয়তো এই গ্রাম দেই ঠিকই রাইডে ওইটা হয়তো আর এলাকার লোকজন আছে Even the Manpower Export Bureau of the government visited the office of the recruiting agency but couldn't find any redress for Praveen. The money too, given to them, could not be recovered. Nor was there any hope of getting any form of compensation. Praveen can now only see despair and a bleak future looming ahead. Is the arbitration process of the government's Manpower Export Bureau able to provide fair compensation claims to duped and harassed Bangladeshi migrant workers? Is the arbitration process able to adopt legal action against the recruiting agencies? Where would the victims of such duplicity and fraudulence of recruiting agencies find justice and compensation? I would like to convey the message from the government that uh, if uh, uh, any women uh, want to go abroad uh, uh, for work, she must, uh, uh, she must take uh, training in our TTC and she must take the a manpower clearance uh, manpower clearance if she takes this both uh, her safety and security i i i, I must say it 99.9 percent .9 will be ensured obviously kormir pakhe je shudhu matro orthonitik bishoy ta ki arbitration ana hoyeche kintu je bishoy ta dorkar amader shekhane holo je ekjon nari bideshe tar je nirjatone bibhinno site eshe nirjatone shikar ba sharirik nirjatone shikar tar pore she mental torture shikar এগুলোকে কিন্তু কোনো আইনে আনা এখনো সম্ভব হয় না নির্যাতনের বিষয়গুলো দালাল রেহাই পেতেছে আরবিটেশনের তার বিশ হাজার টাকা দিয়ে সে রেহাই পেতেছে কিন্তু তার যে শারীরিক নির্যাতন সে যে সামাজিক বৈষম্য শিকার হচ্ছে এলাকা ডুবতে পারে না পরিবারকে মুখ দেখাইতে পারে না এর জন্য এর লাইবিলিটিটা কে নেবে also fell to such fraudulence in Nobinogor of Brahmanbaria. Folks at her village are lamenting at her plight as well. Aki Begum. With seven brothers and sisters in the family, her household has to face severe hardship. Her father died while she was a little girl. With no earning member in the family, Aki's mother has to go through hard times just to maintain her family of seven children. 
Poverty dictated its terms to Aki's mother, and she had to give Aki's hand in marriage when she was only 15. But trouble had only begun. Aki's husband was a drug addict and greedy. He had already taken 80,000 taka as dowry from his in-laws. However, soon after marriage, he started torturing Aki for yet more money. Within days of the birth of his firstborn, he divorces Aki. To find a way out of the poverty at her mother's household, she takes a loan of 80,000 taka, leaves behind her newborn and goes to Lebanon, the master of the house, where Aki finds employment as a domestic maid, turns out to be a very harsh taskmaster. She has to go through inhuman sufferings, attending to household chores for 10 people, apart from cooking for them as well. On top of this, she also has to bear physical torture. For all practical purposes, she becomes a captive slave. One day, the son of the master of the house beats her up into unconsciousness and dumps her in a hospital. After that incident, Aki lost her memory. On slight improvement a month later, she was taken to the Caritas Lebanon Migrant Center. With the assistance of Caritas, Anki returns home on February 8, 2012. Now, she lives a destitute's life with no hope for the future. Her family is under the burden of the loan she had taken. She couldn't get any legal assistance from any quarter and is passing her days in utter poverty and in dire need of medical help. What sort of legal assistance is available to these migrant female workers? Is the village arbitration a solution? or should one find recourse in the penal code of law? The decisions of a village arbitration committee usually sway in favor of the influential and powerful members who tend to rule over such committees. The depraved female migrant workers get no redress in such committees. Otherwise, Pulmala of Srinagar, Halima, or other such women of Mani Gonj and Shingai would not have become destitutes, nor would have the fraudulent middlemen got out and bail and think of casting their spell on new, uninitiated, innocent women. The story of Amaton Bibi is a bit different. Her homestead is in Abdullapur, of Arai Hajar Thana under Narenganj district. This 35-year-old widow decides to take up a job abroad to raise her three sons and give them a meaningful life. Her destination too was Lebanon as a domestic maid. To avail this job, she had to take a loan of 40,000 taka and pay the village middleman. However, she couldn't ensure her passage to Lebanon, even after a year of imploring with the middleman. The middleman turned a deaf ear to her persuasions, and neither would he return the money taken from her. Meanwhile, interest on the loan kept piling up all this time. <laughs> On filing a complaint with the local village leaders and elders, an arbitration was held. The middleman had promised to pay up the money at the arbitration, but is yet to keep his promise. The poverty-ridden widow 
Amaton Bibi is faced with a bleak prospect. If she is unable to pay up the loan amount along with interest, she stands to lose her homestead. If this happens, she can't think of the consequences and where she would end up with her three sons. Where would such migrant workers get justice from, who get tricked out of their money and lose everything even before job placement abroad? Who would assure them of their claims to compensation? The stories of Parveen, Aki and Amaton Bibi are just a glimpse into the innumerable untold sad tales of other such victims. There are about 200,000 Bangladeshi migrant females working across the globe. In Lebanon alone, there are about 56,000 female workers. More than 20,000 female workers go abroad every year. Almost every day, you get to learn of the harassment, tribulations and injustice faced by such female workers. Battered and burned with boiling water. The woman you're about to meet was a domestic worker in the Gulf. She's Articles, features and write-ups are coming out in local and foreign mass media regularly on the atrocities meted out to such women. Yet, no solution has been found to compensate for their claims and losses they bear. The reason why such migrant workers do not get any help is that the government does not have a specific department to deal with such cases nor is there any legal assistance that can provide justice to them. In this backdrop, in spite of the local and foreign donor agencies' willingness to help, they are unable to provide any sort of legal help to the victims, since there are still thousands in queue to avail jobs as migrant workers. It is imperative that a proper legal framework and planning is in place to help safeguard and augment this sector. Thank <laughs> you.